Okay, everybody, we're back and I have finished all of the corrections to the invites and the illustration and we're actually at the stage where we're going to prepare plates. So this is my final plate and I'm actually going to show you how I set this up. But before I do that, I actually want to talk about materials and ordering because before I even order the plates, I kind of need to know how many um, how many prints I'm going to do and get all the materials together if I don't already have them in the shop. And then the last thing I do is I double check the plates and then I order them. So I want to show you where I get most of my materials. This has taken a lot of research to get here because there's so many websites that sell letterpress paper and letterpress materials. But these are my favorites. So other than actually ordering from Crane and Company, Paperworks I have found is actually the cheapest place to get Crane Letra which is a pretty commonly used paper and it's one that a lot of people really like. I personally prefer Savoy over Letra, but per sheet, this is a little bit cheaper. So I think Savoy is just a little bit slicker and a little less fluffy. So I think it takes the ink a little bit better than the Letra does, but it, they're still both really great papers. They also have Crane's colors here. So Paperworks has a ton of letterpress papers. They also have envelopes and then digital papers, um, copier papers and coded papers. But I actually have ordered a lot of swatch books from this company so that I can kind of look at the full line of what's available. Usually there's more Crane's colors available, but they may have changed what they're offering. French paper is also a paper I really, really like for letterpress. You can see you can order a lot of the swatch books right here. But this is a beautiful paper for a lot of different things. I think it does take digital printing as well. And it's just like a nice, heavy cardstock weight. It's great for folded cards. This would be like my go-to for that. So French paper, another great option. Um, Savoy comes in two colors. And so this is probably one of my favorites. It comes in the heavy weight and then also a medium weight kind of like the Letra 300 and 600 GSM, except that this one is slightly heavier. So you can see, um, or actually I think this is a little bit lighter maybe. Can't quite remember, because the I get confused with poundage. I'm used to using GSM, which is grams per square meter, because it's more even across multiple sheets of paper. I think it makes more sense. But either way, they have matching envelopes, and then they have a sort of antique white that's really pretty, and a bright white. So in addition to Paperworks, another place I really like to order material, materials from is Paper Presentation. Now this is more, I think, for like envelopes and folders. And I think their prices are very fair. I have a huge swatch book from them. What I love is the huge variety of materials they have. So you can get liners for your envelopes, all kinds of unique shapes, uh, and they come in this massive amount of colors. So you have... Um, these are, I guess, their new launches. You have Letra options. You can order the Letra envelopes here, as well as this entire selection of matte. Uh, classic Crest, linen, a felt. I haven't um, ordered that before. Arturo papers, and then a variety of metallics as well. So what's nice is they carry this set of colors across pretty much all of their lines. So if you then wanted to get a pocket-style invitation, you can order it in a matching color to the envelopes or kind of mix up a few colors and get your envelopes in one color, your um, your belly bands and your folders in a different color, whatever you want to do there. They also sell regular folders. And I, this is actually a new folder. I've never seen this kind before, but they sell regular, um, what do they have here? I think it's regular pocket folders, what you call them. So here you go. So for like personal branding items or something, let's say you're matching a letterpress ink to this, It'd be a beautiful branded item to have a gorgeous business card in there on matching uh, folder. They also sell a couple other things, so boxes and wraps, cards. So if you just want to get like square cards or round corner cards, you can definitely get them here. And then once again, they offer all of the paper that matches their envelopes. So if for some reason you want to do a folded card that matched the envelope color or kind of mix and match, you could do that here. Envelopes.com is one I haven't really used much, but I have just ordered a swatch book from them, and I think they have some very nice, fair prices, in addition to some offerings that um, Paper Presentation didn't have, like these glitter envelopes, which are really beautiful. So this is another really kind of cool company to get um, envelopes from, and folders. I believe they also have folders. 
So we got coin envelopes, paper and card stock is available, note cards and stationery, um, just about everything you could want on here as well. And then the next site is one that a lot of like DIY brides would probably recognize, and that's cardsandpockets.com. And so this is really a place to get, I think, the most fairly priced pocket folders. So they come in a couple different sizes. What's sort of nice about what they offer is in comparison to paper presentation, they have two five by seven sizes. And that sounds a little strange, but what that means is the A7 comes in an actual five by seven. It folds down to five by seven to fit an A7 envelope. The Signature Plus, which is comparable in price to what um, paper presentation offers and is comparable in size, is larger and needs to go in an outer envelope. So this means that your invitation, the item that will fit right here, can be five by seven. So here you use a slightly smaller invitation, but it's more economical. And here you can use the full five by seven invitation, um, a little bit more expensive, but still very comparable to paper presentation. These two are kind of the same price, and this company only offers the Signature Plus size. So you can see a variety of different pocket folders, tons of envelopes, and they have a huge color range. So if we go to their paper color chart, you can see they have a really beautiful selection of colors. And then something kind of neat they offer is they have these debossed or embossed papers which are a little bit more expensive. They do come as envelopes with like a really nice wood grain. And I've ordered some samples of that that maybe we'll take a look at when they come in to the shop. So once you've ordered all your paper, so you've got your Letra, or your Savoy, whatever you're printing on, your envelopes, if the client wants you to do that or to match to the envelopes, um, your pocket folders, all of your sort of accessories for the prints, you need to get your plates. So there's two places that I have ordered plates from that I feel are excellent and produce gorgeous work. One of them is Concord Engraving and they're I believe in North Carolina. They're like a, I believe they're a family-owned company which is something I really like and their prices are very fair. They do um, great magnesium dyes as well as all the letterpress plates you can need including the deep relief that I order. So this is a place I really enjoy. It's easy turnaround. I just email them. They have my credit card on file and I can sort of specify anything I need and they produce the work really quickly, and I'm very happy with everything I receive from them. In addition, the old standby would be Boxcar. Now this is their expertise, so all they really do is letterpress stuff. They do um, print work too, so if you're a designer but you can't actually um, print the work yourself or you don't have a local printer, Boxcar Press does offer printing in addition to plate making. And they really have a lot of knowledge on this site, so it's a place I would definitely check out when you're ordering plates. You can see kind of the services, learn about the plates, figure out exactly what you need, and see their prices as well for all the different types of plates you need. Now, I generally order the KF-152, and that includes what I order from Concord Engraving. That's the deep relief plate that tends to work a little bit better on platen presses. If I'm printing on a cylinder, I usually get the KF-95 because it's a little bit cheaper. So those are all of my favorite material places. I generally can find everything I need between these companies or possibly if I need something kind of unusual like a leaf or a wax seal that none of these places offer, I can get that from Amazon. So let's go back to our plates now and take a look at what I have and then I'm going to kind of work backwards and show you how I got here. So you can see when I talked earlier about using these registration circles versus using crop marks, this is why. It allows me to save a lot of space. Instead of having a huge image with crop marks out to the edges, just having these two registration marks allows me to fit the plates closer together. And because these are plastic plates, I'm able to just use scissors and cut them apart. I just need to leave enough room for the scissors and it's not a problem. So when my plates arrive, they'll come with a proof. They'll be printed on a, usually a slick piece of paper and I'm able to make sure all the prints look good. And then I can just cut them apart into their individual sections. And I take the time to sort of really make sure I'm cutting them in the right spot. And then I have my plates ready to go. So you can see I did two versions of the illustration. Uh, that's because I'm not 100% sure how well this version will take the ink since it's a very large surface area. I think this one might print better, but we'll see. So let's go open our previous files and show you kind of how I just move them over into this file here. So what I'm going to do is hide this layer, 
create a new one, open up my invitations, and I believe this is the final suite here. You can see I have separated out all my colors as I showed in the previous video. And now it's literally just a matter of highlighting and grabbing everything I want. So what I'll do is usually turn off one of the color layers. This is all the live content that's locked here. Grab this here, copy it, paste it here, and group it. So now it's grouped. And the only thing I'll need to do is expand any of the lines in the text because if you send this with live text and then the company that's making your plates doesn't have this typeface, it's not going to come out like this and they're going to have a problem. So I don't usually do it individually. I'll wait till I've moved everything over and then I'll set all of that to line art. So I'll copy this, control V to paste and group, scoot it over. Same thing here. And perfect. So we'll just do these plates because I'm assuming you can kind of get the sense of how I got to all of the plates. I just copied them over again. Um, I'll show you the illustration in a moment, but let me show you how I would get to the next step here. So I would move my plates around, kind of get them where I want, and then highlight all of the plates, go to type, create outlines, and then go to object, path, and outline stroke. And that's just in case there was some line art that I did not outline before. I don't like to send live like lines, like pen tool lines, because the um, it's possible if things had to scale or move that the actual line weight can change. When you've outlined your lines, they will stay that exact thickness no matter how you scale it in proportion to everything else. So now you might be wondering how I'm gonna get these lighter areas to work. And they're all they are is if I kind of click into them here, you can see that they're just set to a lighter opacity of the same color. So that means all I actually have to do here is grab everything and turn it to black. And I like to do this just to make sure that everything's going to work. I believe your, my, most plate makers can do this for you. They can change the colors as long as you have it separated out. This is just my working method and I'm used to it. So it's what I like to do. It allows me to kind of have the most control over every step. So if I could find my color swatches, which my eyes are not catching it, I'll just come here, bring them to a true black. I don't know if this really matters because I believe the RIP software will generally fix whatever black you have, like if you had a rich black or a, um, a true black. Um, in this case, it's fine. So now I have my line art here and I can see the contrast between the leaves and I actually want to lighten them up a little bit because I find that the half tones tend to print a little bit darker than they look on the screen. So I want to grab these and actually lighten them all a little bit more. And my way of doing that is to double click the magic wand tool and actually check on opacity. And that means that when I use my magic wand, it will select objects by the opacity in addition to the fill and stroke color. If I do not check that, when I click this, it will select all of the items that are black regardless of what their tint is. So the opacity, um, checking that allows me to grab exactly what I'm looking for. And then I can set their opacity to whatever I want it to be. So let's say I want to set it to about 35. So that creates a little more contrast and if it fills in a little bit or gets a little darker than expected, it shouldn't be a huge problem now. So that's essentially how I set up the plates. I copy and paste them over into a new file that will be my plate making file. I arrange them by their little groups and I set them all to black and make sure that all the text is outlined. And that's literally it. At this point, I'll just rotate them around and kind of nudge them together to take up the space as best as I can, kind of make the most use of the blank negative areas. And then I will export that as an EPS by going to File, Save As, set it to an EPS, which more people can read than an Illustrator file, and email that to my plate maker and have that, that'll usually be out within the day if I send it in by noon. So the one extra thing I probably should show you is how I get the illustration over here because it's a little bit, just a little bit more complicated. So if I go into here and I go find my illustration, you can see I have two versions. When we talked last, when I looked at sort of the illustration, I mentioned that I had to kind of rework it a little bit because it was going to be printed in negative. So this was sort of some touch up of that image. 
I actually added sort of the faces back in and I reversed out this while leaving all of this area in the negative form. So let's open those up. I'll show you how I get all of this artwork here. So my layers are all relatively simple. You can see I didn't use these, so I'm just going to delete them. I won't save this. This is just my way of grabbing everything. I am going to uncheck everything, highlight all of the artwork. So now nothing is locked. I'm able to grab every object. And then I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And this might take a second, so I'm going to get a little rainbow wheel here. But the reason I'm doing this on this artwork here is it just allows me to kind of get everything grouped before I try and bring it over into my plate file and possibly scoot things around or lose line work or miss objects. So now that I have everything like this, one of the ways I can kind of get this to go really quickly, because you can see I have things on multiple layers, and for me to cut apart everything just to get the silver part, the printing area, might take me a while. The fastest way, I believe, if I remember exactly how I did this, is just to hit highlight all of the artwork and hit divide. And now this might take a second. I can't 100% remember exactly how I set it up before. I may have taken a couple different steps, but this is generally kind of what I would do. So by dividing the artwork, what it's going to do is anytime there's an overlap between one color or one object and another, it's going to cut that into a new shape. It will not delete the previous shapes, it's just going to make new shapes. So let me show you what that looks like in a simplified way. So if I have two circles here and they overlap, let me show you what these different Pathfinder modes do. So if I hit Unite, they form into one shape. If I hit minus front, the front object cuts out of the back object. If I hit, um, what's this one called, Intersect, it creates the intersect of the objects. And then obviously this one creates the opposite of that. Now what divide will do and why it's really useful is it will cut all of the objects but not delete any of the content like these ones do. So now I actually have this shape, this shape, and this shape, which makes this a lot easier because now I can just fuse all the colors together based on their color. So um, I believe trim and merge work very similarly to minus front and unite. I'm actually not 100% sure how they're different. I think it has something to do with how it converts them to clipping masks. But let's get back to our artwork. So you can see once I um, divided everything, it's now all in one layer. And all I have to do is use my magic wand to select the color that I either want to remove or want to print. And then I should be able to delete it. So let's see if that'll work. There we go. So now all we have is the silver area. I can just highlight this. You can see I have a little artifact there, so let me delete that first. I'm just going to use the eraser tool. Since it's already grouped, I could just kind of grab it. Oh, processor's running a little bit slow. Maybe that wasn't the best way. But okay, so now it's deleted. It looks like everything's already grouped. So I can probably just copy this, go to my plate file, paste it in, and set it to black. Now something you're gonna wanna keep an eye on that you're gonna wanna check is when I highlighted it at first, it came up with a question mark. And that means there might've been a couple white objects in here that when I highlight and change the color, it will turn them black as well. I don't see any errors, but just make sure that you don't have any kind of like invisible objects that get turned to your new color and then kind of affect your line art. So the final thing I would probably do with this image is go through with my eraser tool and just delete out any kind of like minor artifacts, just because I don't really need those on the plate. I, it's not a problem if they print, it's just extra work for the plate to kind of hold up those images. And that sounds a little silly, it's not really working, but it's just little artifacts that may not look great in print. So I would just kind of go through and delete anything I didn't want. And that would absolutely be it. I don't need any crop marks on this because it's just one color. So all I have to do is line up this one image. I don't have to line up a second color to it. So it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna do that again really quickly on the other image so you can kind of see. So we did this one, that's the original. This was my altered version. 
once again, delete any layers that I don't need. You just keep an eye on your image to make sure nothing's changing in a way you don't like. Uncheck all of the locks. Highlight the entire artwork. Divide. And then you can see, so we had an error this time. So this is something kind of worth noting. So I might have had to rem like move the order of some of the objects. You can see they're all still here, but by dividing them, it changed them all to the color that was kind of overlapping. And this happens sometimes. So let's uncheck that. Just going to control Z. And I'll probably have to come back through and see what I did wrong. So, okay, we found our error. And it's that I didn't set all my paths to outline stroke. So it's kind of good to see that every once in a while I forget the order that I'm doing something. Um, but it kind of helps you see what kind of might go wrong. And it's important to kind of keep an eye on that. So you can see when it's set to strokes, when they're live strokes, the divide's not going to work. It's just going to kind of turn everything all to one color. The objects still exist, but it affects kind of how they interact with one another. So now I'm going to hit divide. There's a lot of line work here, so it takes a second. We'll see everything moves now to its own layer, and I can do the same thing I did last time. So this time I'm going to use the magic wand, and I'm going to select the silver, and I'm just going to copy it. Instead of deleting out the navy, which was sort of an unnecessary step, and I'm going to paste that. Oh, see, I accidentally grabbed the wrong color there, so let me go back. Occasionally, that happens. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit so I can make sure I'm actually clicking where I want to click. And we can see now I have the correct color. Go back to my plates, paste it. And before I move it, I like to group it while it's all selected because if I then were to grab the arrow tool and move it around and it didn't have everything as a group, it may break apart the image. And then I have all these little pieces that are individual groupings and it becomes a problem. So once that's here, all I have to do is make the artwork black. Double check my plates and I'm ready to go. So after a little bit of arranging, you'll get from there to here. I kind of take a look, make sure that I have cutting room around these. I don't really need even this much space, but um, even about that distance is fine. I know I can get scissors through there just from experience check everything, go back through, click on stuff, confirm that all of the type is set to outlines, all of the strokes are set to outlines, and um, all of my halftones are how I want them to look. All of my artwork is placed, and then I just export it or save it as an EPS. And just I just kind of leave these settings as they are. Let that kind of scale down. Tells me it has a limited TIFF preview, that's fine. And then I'll just kind of double check. So I'm just going to hit the space bar and make sure this is the right artwork. And there you go. So now you can see that this is actually ready to send to my plate maker. And one little detail that I want to mention, when I was showing you these before, the different folder sizes, make sure that you plan all of this stuff before you send your plates. And here's why. These are significantly cheaper, but because they need a smaller invitation size, I actually had to scale down the artwork in the plates by 5% to make sure that we wouldn't have any important information cropped off of the invitation at the smaller size. So plan your paper and your materials first because these are more rigid. I can't have, you know, having these custom made to the right size of my artwork would be prohibitively expensive, but planning around the objects that already exist and are less changeable means that the design is just going to go a lot smoother. So the next video will probably be when our materials arrive at the shop and I will show you kind of how I get set up and we'll do some paper trimming. But until then, hopefully this was helpful.